Welcome to Closer to Truth. Today we explore zero. Zero the number, zero the idea. Closer to Truth is collaborating with the Zero Project headquartered in the Netherlands. I speak with the visionary organizer of the Zero Project, philosopher and poet, Peter Govitz. Peter, welcome. What is it about Zero that is important enough to have its own project? The Zero Project is dedicated to what we consider to be a unique moment in the evolution of uh, mankind on Earth a leap from the empirical that had not happened before. People are always grounded in their in the immediacy of life and experience. The notion that nothingness would be a meaningful category of thought that could be applied in different fields, including in mathematics, was really a, a, just a, a huge uh, breakthrough. If you consider that archaeological evidence has shown that human beings have been counting for at least 40 or 50,000 years with uh, notches found on stone and bone. And if you then consider that nothing much changes except that these notches become groups in, in you know groups of five or 10 or whatever, different cultures have different counting systems. And that it, they all around the world, without exception, start at counting at one. No one starts counting at zero. Zero did simply was not around. It doesn't appear anywhere in the uh, in the historical record. And that's the zero project. We want to find out the exact details surrounding that. Around two thousand years ago, fifteen hundred to two thousand years ago, we begin to see references to the, the concept of zero manifesting in a particular cultural discipline. That's pretty remarkable. So something very special happened when zero was invented, and we wanted an answer to that and could not find it. We found that not a single interdisciplinary uh, systematic study had been done into the uh, invention of zero. And we were, you know, we were exasperated. I'm Mayank Vaya and my basic interest has been in uh, astronomy and the sciences of ancient times. And zero has a special place in these kind of um, studies. Zero is, is a very peculiar entity which can be both uh, scary and which can be both uh, very amusing. And uh, if treated casually, it can be a very casual entity, simply a placeholder of uh, null value and stuff like that. But zero has many, many perspectives and many, many aspects, especially if you look at it from an uh, Indian perspective. Because the idea of null in India is explored in a variety of ways. So you have null um, in the case of philosophy, where the universe is supposed to have been created by null, where the god creates himself through um, a, a self-meditation. -med but there is really no entity who exists. So there is neither space nor time nor any kind of entity before the world comes into being. So the world essentially comes from null. So that is that is probably the first uh, touch of a uh, kind of vast emptiness that comes in Indian philosophy. By six, uh, fifth century AD, when Aryabhata and others start formalizing the mathematical knowledge, they come out with a whole bunch of mathematical ideas. And then they, for the first time, worry about the algebra of zero. So zero upon zero was one and things like that. The question of zero in physics is a very peculiar problem of zero. Uh, first of all, in most cases, physics doesn't have a zero. All ze most of the zeros in physics are arbitrary, wherever you put the coordinate system you want to. But there are three very fundamental zeros of physics which are, which are, um, which are exciting and which are even now difficult to track. The first zero that we come across in physics is the fact that the, uh, that the, um, the mass of a photon, the light particle, is zero in absolute sense of the word. And the third zero that is even more fascinating is the zero of temperature. That there is an absolute zero below which there cannot be a temperature. It's a temperature at which everything becomes sta uh, stationary with respect to everything else and there is no movement. 
So what is the very reality of physical world? How does zero come into that picture? How does null come into the picture? Is there really nothing um, that Indians love or is there really something that always remains as the Western philosophy has said? The bottom line is that zero has had form, zero has had changed, form zero has had various structures and so on. I'm looking at zero from the perspective of a biologist or a neuroscientist, more specifically. Uh, and as such, I'm exploring how our mental world originates from the workings of the brain. And in doing so, I am used to study how the brain processes something that means some sort of a stimulus, empirical objects or events, something that actually exists in the world. For instance, over the last years, we have spent much time exploring how collections of items or numerical quantity is represented in the brain. With zero, however, it's entirely different because zero denotes nothing, an empty set that has no elements that could be perceived or counted. In fact, zero is defined by the absence of any countable item. And understanding that zero is something, a relevant category, a collection, even if empty, and the numerical concept requires ultimate abstract thinking. So to grasp zero, the mind and the brain needs to depart from an empirical reality. The absence of elements need to become a mental category or a mathematical object, if you will. In other words, nothing needs to become something. And this requires the brain to transcend what it can experience with the senses in the real world. And I think this is an utmost challenge for the brain that has actually evolved to deal with stimuli to represent something, and now it has to represent the absence of something or nothing. And as a reflection of this mental challenge, Zero is a true latecomer in both human history, in human development, in evolution, and also in neuronal processing. I'm John Marmish. Uh, my area of research has to do with the philosophy of nihilism. Nihilism is a philosophy of nothingness. Um, the relevance of zero uh, to my area of research has to um, do with the um, encounter with nothingness. Uh, in the West, the encounter with nothingness uh, has generally been uh, a negative one. Nothingness has been um, seen as something that is um, associated with oblivion, uh, with uh, the uh, lack of meaning, with uh, the destruction of any sort of value. This attitude towards nothingness may help explain um, why it is that the number zero uh, was something that the Greeks were not at all interested in. Uh, on the contrary, in the East, the encounter with nothingness has uh, been seen as productive, as having potential. And so in the field of uh, nihilism, I've been interested in looking into the positive potential of uh, nihilism and uh, zero, the uh, discovery of zero in the East gives an avenue uh, to start exploring this particular issue. Beatrice Lumpkin, teacher of mathematics at Malcolm X College and the Chicago Public Schools, now retired. Start with our numerals, recorded numbers. How could you tell 72 from 702 or 7002 without zero? India is the origin of the zero we use as a placeholder to show that a decimal position is empty. But there's more to this story. India is also the origin of the digits one to nine that we use today. Modern numerals use base 10 and place or positional value. This 
goes back to India 1,500 years ago, when Europe was still using Roman numerals. If you want to know how much easier it is to use the Indian numerals and zero, just try multiplying 7,002 by 72 in Roman numerals. I know you can't do it, and the Romans couldn't either, so they used the calculi little stones. Uh, well, 800 years ago, a merchant named Fibonacci brought the Indian numerals and zero to Italy from Africa. He wrote, so the Latin race should no longer be deficient in that knowledge. People found the new numerals and the zero much easier. But they were opposed that, quote, the work of the devil. But easy one out, and Indian numerals are what we use today. As the space holders, just one use of zero. Use as a number, zero simplifies calculations. It's also the reference point between positive and negative numbers. And I think it's just as important for our Caucasian children to learn the true history of the world, which is that civilization did not begin in Europe. Myself, Dr. Partho Sharati Mukhopadhyay. I teach mathematics at Ramakrishna Mission Residential College, Narendrapur in India. This is an autonomous college under the University of Calcutta. I prefer to call zero as the naughty boy of mathematics family. Have you ever given it a thought that this is a number? What is the significance of this number? Suppose you have two pens and I take one pen away from you and I ask you, how many pens do you have now? Surely you will say one. And then I take away that two. And then again, I ask you the question, how many pens do you have? Almost certainly you will say none. But observe that I asked you, how many pens do you have? If you want to give it in affirmative sense, then you need this number zero. But usually in our day-to-day -day life, we don't count with zero. Zero is not considered as a counting number. Our counting usually begins with one. And that's how we don't go to market and buy you know, zero fish, right? So that's how this is a number that human, human being once had to invent for its own need. Other numbers like one, two, three, etc., they are called natural numbers. With the development, gradual development of human civilizations, these numbers naturally came to every civilization, every ancient civilization at different corners of the world. But zero was nowhere there. At different point of time, this was to be invented. Let me just throw some light on the peculiar property of this mathematical number zero. See, this is the number which is neither positive nor negative. A number which is neither prime nor composite. A number which when added to other numbers does not increase this, the other number. When it's subtracted, the other number does not decrease. When it is multiplied by other number, that number vanishes. And regarding division, well, that's an enigma. You cannot divide a number by zero in the realm of mathematics. Raising to the power, a number raised to the power zero if the number itself is non-zero. It has to be defined as one to save the situation mathematically. Factorial zero, again, that has to be defined as one. You know, everywhere, zero and zero-like concepts in mathematics, they are something different than others. Other numbers, other objects of mathematics, 
they obey certain rules, but zero everywhere makes its own rule. And you have to abide by that. That's the importance of this number. It is said that if this number is not there, then the entire edifice of mathematics will collapse. As we all know, Indian subcontinent is exceptionally rich in epigraphical wealth. Intensive and extensive epigraphical explorations have yielded hundreds and thousands of inscriptions from throughout the length and breadth of the country. Far flung in time and space, in different scripts and languages, thus there is a huge corpus of inscriptions copied, deciphered, and published. In this context, we are connected and concerned with the dated inscriptions only with a specific object of locating origin of zero in inscriptions, especially by examining early inscriptions in an effort to take back the origin to an earlier phase than the already known and established dates by the epigraphists and scholars. So the origin of zero has its own unique place in Indian epigraphical studies. Western science has, has done phenomenal work. There is no doubt about it that there is no way Indians would have invented engines and aircrafts and stuff. But now it is beginning to reach a limit where we need to accept the perspective that maybe we need to expand our views. Many fascinating aspects about zero have only recently been discovered, particularly in my area in the realm of cognition. Now, I think, is the perfect time to integrate these novel insights from different disciplines. And I think of the discipline of philosophy as constantly open that um, while you know guided by the sort of north star of this ideal of truth um, we're never we're never there <laughs> it's a constant journey i think it gives all people a better sense that we have a common destiny and that all people have contributed to the current fund of knowledge. I really invite all of you, my friends, to get yourself educated with the claims and counterclaims that are prevalent regarding the inception of this extremely important number zero that is most important perhaps in the general on-go of intelligence of human civilization. Closer to Truth loves zero. It's a critical event in intellectual history and a milestone in mathematics, science, and technology. Zero's origin, culturally and linguistically, as well as mathematically and philosophically, could elicit novel ideas and new ways of thinking. And then the broader philosophical significance of zero reveals transcendental ideas of nothingness, emptiness, voids, blanks, as features of reality. We love zero because nothing is a prime theme of Closer to Truth.